It started when it was just me and the, and the cameraman and the, and, the, and the clockwork camera. Yeah. Um, you don't make natural history films like that anymore. Um, the natural history films now of this sort of quality are made by literally hundreds of people. There may be 30, there may be 50 cameramen who will be working on one particular programme. I think something like 300 cameramen have worked on the series as a whole. Uh, because now you've got the facilities to go up in the skies and the bottom of the seas. You've got, you can trek over the, uh, over the polar wastes. You can go over the deserts. You can be in the jungles of the world. And all those pictures you can bring back in order to give a unique picture, which human beings haven't seen until this generation. Um, one of the most immediate dangers that are facing the planet today is, of course, rising temperatures. And uh, where you may see that, of course, is, is actually more up in the north than it is in the south. But in the Arctic, the Arctic is temperatures rising very, very fast. And how we, the, the team who made this series determined, of course, that they would needed pictures of, of, of the melting ice that would symbolize this. Uh, and they went up to the north. Now, the glaciers uh, in the, in, in, up in the north in the Arctic um, are moving very fast indeed. Uh, and they went to one particular glacier, uh, knowing that it was advancing into the sea rather fast. Uh, but you need... Gases are always on the move a bit, but you need dramatic uh, uh, event. They're a bit like children, David, unpredictable. Yeah, <laughs> quite so. But they wanted to see the uh, gas that was carving, that is to say, coming off in lumps. And they decided that the way they would see that best would be from the air and in a helicopter. They eventually, on the very last day of their, of their location, they were up in the helicopter and they spied the glacier suddenly beginning to carve. That there were uh, sections of the glacier the size of a skyscraper, of a great multi-storied building, falling into the water, causing huge surges. Now, you're a helicopter pilot. Is that tricky? It can be, David, yes. <laughs> I mean, huge uprushes of air uh, when the vast blocks fall into the sea. And, and what that does, and if, if you're a pilot, I mean, you will know uh, how you're going to get a steady shot to see that. The pilot who was working on that helicopter uh, has my imagination, and you would know much more better than me, how skilled he was to get the sort of shots of the carving of the glacier, which is included in this series. All helicopter pilots are very skillful, David. Um, <laughs> um, for many years, though, as a, a TV presenter at least, you, you held back a bit from speaking quite publicly about environmental issues. Is, um, was there a reason you decided to do that? Um, well, when I, I started 60 years ago, in the mid-50s, mid, mid and to be truthful, I don't think there was anybody in the, in the mid-50s who thought that there was a danger that we might annihilate part of the natural world. There were animals that were in danger, that's true. Um, and there were animals that we could see, if we didn't do something, they were going to become extinct. Uh, and the notion that, that human beings might exterminate a whole species uh, was a slightly, um, I wouldn't say an alarming one, you just hadn't thought about it. And if it did occur, as it did with the Arabian Oryx, for example, it seemed the exception. Uh, now, of course, we are only too well aware that the whole of the natural world is at our disposal, as it were, that we, we, ha we can do things accidentally that exterminate the whole area of, of, of the natural world and the species that live within it. It's difficult to overstate it. Um, we are now so numerous, so powerful, so all-pervasive, the mechanisms that we have for destruction are so wholesale and so frightening that we can actually just exterminate whole ecosystems without even noticing it. We have now to be really aware of the dangers of what we're doing. 
And we already know that, of course, the plastic problem in the seas is, is wreaking uh, appalling damage upon marine life, the extent of which we don't yet fully know. And why do you think the, sort of, the world leaders and those in, in, in uh, key positions of leadership, why do you think they've taken so long and there have been quite a few faltering steps uh, to act on environmental challenges? Because the connection between... Um, the natural world and the urban world, the society of human society, has always, um, since the Industrial Revolution, has been remote and widening. Uh, and we didn't realize the effects of what we were doing uh, out there. But now we are seeing that almost everything we do has its echoes and has its uh, duplications and implications across the natural world, so that uh, we have now to really to care for what we do, because we can exterminate things without even knowing. Mm -hmm. The chain is so delicate, isn't it? And that if you pluck out some of these gaps without realizing what you're doing, the, the consequences, the repercussions go for generations. Yes. Yeah. And talking of generations, people of my generation now are beginning to step into positions of leadership around the world. The work to save the planet is probably largely going to happen on our watch. What advice do you have for my generation, and, and what, what can we build on that you have started? I think um, the paradox that there has never been more a time when more people have been out of touch with the natural world um, than there's now. And we have to recognize that every breath of air we take, every mouthful of food that we take comes from the natural world. And that if we damage the natural world, we damage ourselves. We are one coherent ecosystem. It's not just a question of beauty or interest or wonder. Uh, it's the essential ingredient, the essential part of human life is a healthy planet. We are in the danger of wrecking that. If we don't recognize the sort of connections that I've been describing, uh, then the whole of the planet becomes in hazard. And we are destroying the natural world and with it ourselves. David, uh, it just remains me to say a huge thank you on behalf of everyone here for you being here today to talk um, so openly. And a huge congratulations again for winning the Crystal Award. A round of applause, please, for Sir David Attenborough.